2010 was an eventful year for Jamaica, and when the historians sit down to write, there will be much to draw on. The major talking point of the year surrounded the extradition of former Tivoli Garden strongman and patron Christopher Didas Coke. That aside, there were several news events keeping the Jamaican public in rapt attention. The Jamaica Gleaner will take you through the year and the important events which have left an impression in 2010. No one could forget when it happened. It left a shaken world sympathizing with the Caribbean nation. Jamaica, along with the rest of the world, felt the displacement as an earthquake measuring 7.0 on the Richter scale shook Haiti, killing hundreds of thousands. Jamaica, which has had a long relationship with the country since the Haitian Revolution, felt the impact and rushed to lend a helping hand as Jamaicans gave and pledged millions in cash and kind. Jamaica had several tremors of her own. In February, the already damaged image of the Jamaica Constabulary Force was further sullied when a large quantity of guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition found in the hands of criminals were traced back to the police armory. Eleven individuals were arrested, including a police sergeant. Jamaica also continued to experience severe drought conditions which persisted from 2009. Daily water lock-offs were the order of the day, schools were closed, and households and businesses mainly in the eastern end of the island had to find an alternative access to water. Jamaica continued to experience the effect of the global recession as many continued to feel the brunt of the economic slowdown in the United States and Europe. Major sectors in the economy such as remittances, bauxite alumina and tourism were affected. Jamaica also returned to a borrowing arrangement with the International Monetary Fund in a 1.2 billion US dollar standby agreement. In the last part of the year, Jamaicans were introduced to additional taxes on tobacco and alcohol. This move did not go down well with some manufacturers and the government had no choice but to revise the package after much protest. In 2010, the Jamaican government did score some positives with the Jamaica Debt Exchange Program, which lowered interest rates on government bonds. This has been hailed by financial experts as one of the most successful debt exchange programs. In September, Jamaica experienced one of the most deadly storms in recent history when Tropical Depression 16 claimed 13 lives. Two persons were not found. The system, which was upgraded to Nicole as it passed Jamaica, left towns flooded, roadways destroyed, and schools and businesses closed for days. Roads up to this day are still pockmarked from the storm damage which some would say took Jamaica by surprise. The damage from the floods was estimated to cost the country $18 billion. Crime for the most part continued its deadly assault on the island. 2009 was a record year with 1,680 murders. However, the first five months of 2010 played a key role in threatening to top the previous year. 747 murders were recorded in the first five months, sparking public outcry from all sectors of society. The crime rate declined since May following the massive security operation in West Kingston. With a few days to go in 2010, Jamaica's murder count stood at fewer than 1,400 murders. However, concerns still existed as towns reported extortion and turf wars. Entertainer Buja Banton also had trials of his own. The Grammy-nominated performer who was arrested in December 2009 in Florida on charges of conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute just over 5 kilograms of cocaine went on trial this year. The trial in September kept the public in suspense. It lasted for four days with the jury deliberating for another two days. At the end of the deliberation, the jury was split, and Judge James Moody declared a mistrial for the Jamaican reggae star Buja Banton. Buja Banton, who is now out on bail under strict conditions, will be retried in February this year. When people reflect on 2010, 
The biggest story which will linger on people's lips will be the extradition saga involving the Jamaican government, the U.S. government, and alleged drug and gun runner Christopher Dudas Koch. This story, which began in August 2009, gathered momentum in 2010, as each week revealed something new and gripping. In March, things came to a head when Prime Minister Bruce Golding stood up in Parliament after months of pressure from Jamaica and Washington, and told the sitting that the U.S. government had not met all the requirements for the Jamaican government to sanction the extradition of Koch. Golding's bravado was on full display as he told the sitting that constitutional rights did not begin at Ligony, in reference to the United States Embassy's location in St. Andrew. He then suffered tremendous political fallout as he came under pressure to resign after claiming that his government was not involved with the lobbying efforts of Manat Phelps and Phillips. He then backtracked, declaring that the Jamaica Labour Party was indeed involved. This admission by Golding in May brought heat from the private sector, the political arena and civil society. For days, the main message was for Golding to resign. As pressure mounted, the Prime Minister on May 17 in his address to the nation apologized for his government's conduct. He then said the extradition warrant for Christopher Dudas Koch had been signed. The days that followed will never be forgotten in Jamaica's history. Tension descended on the nation as residents in Tivoli Gardens blockaded themselves in. The Jamaica Constabulary Force issued warnings and advisories, and Kingstonians remained on edge. With a significant military buildup becoming apparent, criminal elements began attacking police stations and different targets around the city on May 23. The security forces then entered West Kingston the following day to execute a warrant for Koch's arrest. During and after the battle, at least 73 persons were killed, houses were destroyed, and the nation's largest shopping district faced the brunt of the violence. Kingston was shut down for three days, and businesses along with examination schedules were negatively impacted. An international glare also descended on Jamaica, as journalists from several countries arrived in the island to report on the disturbance. At the end of the operation, Christopher Dudas Koch was still at large. The police continued their pursuit of Koch, placing a bounty of $5 million on his head. The search for Koch lasted for just under a month before he was found on the Mandela Highway in the company of the colorful pastor, the Reverend Al Miller. In less than two days, Christopher Dudas Koch was in the United States, ending a dramatic chapter in Jamaica's history. Not all was doom and gloom as the country celebrated the victory of Yendi Phillips, who represented Jamaica in August at the Miss Universe pageant in Las Vegas. She placed second as runner-up to Miss Mexico and is the highest-placed Jamaican contestant since the pageant's inception. The 2010 Commonwealth Games in October also incited a wave of pride across the island as the Jamaican team took home seven medals, two of them gold, four silvers, and one bronze. Lerone Clark placed first in the men's 100 meters, and Tresha Smith took the gold medal in the women's triple jump. In addition to our own stories, the Jamaica Gleaner would like to highlight two major international headlines this year. Our first honorary mention goes to the October rescue of the Chilean miners who were trapped underground for 69 days. Our second mention goes to the revelations made by the controversial whistleblowing website WikiLeaks. Also, let us not forget who left us. Professor Rex Nettlefoot. Professor Barry Chavans. Journalist John Maxwell. Culinary great Norma Shirley. Former editor-in-chief of The Gleaner, Dudley Stokes and the Reverend Canon Weevil Gordon. From the music scene, reggae legend Gregory Isaacs, dancehall artist O'Neill Edwards, reggae artist Sugar Minot, dancehall producer Cleveland Brown, 
and reggae producer Sonia Pottinger.